to accomplish our God-given destiny, we're going to have to go against the flow of this world system. You are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Let your light shine so that men may see your good works. We are to be the light in a dark world. It says we will not all sleep, but we all be changed. And that word change means to alter, transform, or revolutionize. Mrs. Bevere. Hello. I, I felt like we already knew each other. Okay. Okay. We have come out of some amazing, amazing sessions, and you talked about so many areas of the Holy Spirit, but there are some questions that we knew we weren't going to be able to get to, and I just want to take this moment to address some of the things that maybe just really hit a chord that people want to hear a little bit more okay. about, or to address things we didn't have a chance to come up with. Mm -hmm. And one of those ones, I know for me, you talked about that we've been so careful to develop an atmosphere that we've sometimes neglected the presence of the Holy Spirit. So what I want to ask you right now just to talk about for a moment is how can we invite the Holy Spirit's presence back? We've got the atmosphere, now we've got the, we want to get the presence back without bringing back the weird yep. or the long, drawn out, exhausting <clears throat> services. Well, the way we do it is ask. Um, remember what I said about the Holy Spirit He's a gentleman, and if we don't initiate, he won't initiate unless he really has a purpose. Um, what I've noticed is many times in churches, uh, people come up to get saved. Mm -hmm. I will take a couple minutes to say, Holy Spirit, please touch them. I mean, people start crying all over the place, and he literally comes in. And mm -hmm. I always like that because the Bible talks about tasting the heavenly gift. Yeah. And I find people are a lot harder to backslide if they've tasted the heavenly gift. Mm -hmm. And so I'll never forget, I was in a church, and this church is a huge church. And they've made the transition out of some of the old, old charismatic stuff. Mm -hmm. They were back in those days. Mm -hmm. But they've made that transition. One night, the Spirit of God came in. People were weeping all over. And then the Lord just showed me now, it's time to tell them to give thanks and pray and praise God. And I closed the service. And the pastor said to me, wow, I was expecting now we're going to go an hour and we're going to have this, mm -hmm. all this, you know, mm -hmm. kind of weird stuff going on, like what seems to happen. Mm -hmm. He said, I loved how God led you to when it was done. He said, I could actually feel it too, like, it, like he had done his purpose. And you said, all right, let's now close the service. So Lisa, I've seen the Spirit of God's presence come in and just for two minutes. Yeah. And people are so yeah. deeply impacted, not for five hours. And, and I, you know, you and I were having this conversation actually in the car. We were saying, you know, sometimes we only have 35 minutes in a service. Right. But right. the truth is, it's our 35 minutes. And so instead of preaching for 35 minutes and preach then... Preach 30. Yeah, preach 30. Give pause for the Holy Spirit, or in the middle of your message, yep. give room for the Holy Spirit to actually have His way. And sometimes ministers are so busy trying to cover so much area that they forget to let it get saturated by the Spirit. I'm certainly guilty yeah. of that. Yeah. No, I. Yeah, we all are. Okay. And then the other thing, uh, question. You know, the role of the Holy Spirit, and you you really talked about a lot of this, and you were talking about praying in tongues and being, you know, filling ourselves with the Spirit. But I want you to talk a little bit more about, you said that the Holy Spirit would fill us. We've got that. Mm -hmm. But what about when he forbids us? What does that look like? There's, um, the, in, in, in the book of Colossians, it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Then it says in Romans chapter 8, it says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. If you actually look at the word sons there, it's sons and daughters, mm -hmm. it's we us, which means mature sons. Mm -hmm. Not every Christian is led by the Spirit. Many are led by their emotions, their mm -hmm. intellect, by okay. situations, by circumstances. He was saying the mature ones are going to be led by the Spirit. How does he lead us? The Spirit bears witness in our spirit. Yeah. So in other words, let's say I want to go to a particular city and I feel mm -hmm. this 
this gnawing, itching, almost irritating scratching. Has it ever happened to you? You've actually yes. gone somewhere you shouldn't have. Yes. And what was the fruit of that? And the fruit of it was I said, I will not do that again. I will not <laughs> allow. <laughs> yeah. And it was a disaster. Yeah. It was really bad. Yeah. And I've learned that if I get that kind of a check, right. don't go, mm -hmm. just yeah. stop. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't cancel meetings because right. I have done a situation before where afterwards I felt like the Lord didn't want me to go somewhere, but I gave my word that I would come. And what I said to the Lord is, God, your word says that I'm to be a man who swears my own and hurt and changes not. I got to go there. I need you to protect me. Mm -hmm. I need you right. to make sure this thing to, and you know what? I, he has never rebuked me for that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really great, but I could sense his protection on me when I was there. Mm -hmm. So it's better for me to hear first yeah. that little check and nine, yeah. don't do it. You don't want to go there. So and, and it's really amazing. You can recognize it. Yeah. It's so prevalent. Mm -hmm. And the longer you walk with him, the more sensitive you are to it. You know, and I, I think that we've also talked about, um, you know, there's a lot of, you talked about Dr. Cho and just the amazing things he's did, how he's continued to filled himself up by praying the Holy Spirit. But I also know one of the keys, and I think a lot of people don't understand we can actually do this, is he says no to a lot of things so that he can guard that time in the Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit will tell us no on these possible things so that he can do an impossible thing in our lives. And, and, so. and let me make a mention here. Um, you're going to notice in the book of Acts, they got filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, but then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit stood up and said in Acts chapter 4. They were filled with the Spirit in Acts chapter 5. Being filled with the Spirit is not a one-time thing. It's right. something that God is right. saying, don't be drunk with wine where is excess. Well, be continually filled with the Spirit. So right. mm -hmm. in other words, as believers, it's not like we leak. It's that we want to be saturated continually. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, right. there's times in our marriage mm -hmm. we're just saturated in love with each other. There's other times that we've been away from each other. We got to get resaturated. Do you understand yeah. what I mean yeah. by that? Absolutely. Do you understand what I mean by that, I should say. Yeah. And yeah. so... You have to be intentional. It's, it's an intentional. Yeah. So mm -hmm. stay Stay filled. It's a continuous yes. thing, yes. filled with the Spirit. And when you're filled with the Spirit, he said it will manifest by psalms mm -hmm. and hymns and spiritual songs. Mm -hmm. You'll find yourself just singing. I've been singing a lot and more maybe this week. Turn off the TV. Turn off the and TV. Limit other things that are going to drain you. Um, question Do all believers have the ability to operate in spiritual gifts or is it just ministers? That is such a great question. I believe every believer has the ability, capability of operating in any gifts of the Spirit. If somebody's in need of a great miracle, that gift of mir or working of miracles can come on any believer. Absolutely. There are certain people that God puts that gift on their life and it works wherever they go minister. Mm -hmm. You know, I have seen individuals, one I'm thinking of that we know well, who's a great man of God. He had the gift of healing on his life in the area of hearts. And there were people that used to come from all over the nation into his meetings that had heart problems and their hearts would get healed. He had a gift of healing on his life and ministry, and that helped him to accomplish his ministry that he was called to. But you know what? I remember another friend of mine, he said his son had literally drowned in a bathtub. He was electrocuted, and he was dead for 45 minutes. He said, John, I prayed for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. and nothing was happening. The paramedics mm -hmm. were sitting there in disgust because yeah. it was a straight yeah. line bar. And he said, something hit my top of my head, and it came in out, and when it hit my mouth, he said, Somebody else looked through my eyes, and I said, wow. you'll live and not die. Yeah. And my, his son was raised from the dead. And he was not a minister at that time. I he remember. was a police officer in L.A. And he wasn't yeah. in a service at that time either. He had just come home from the first service he had ever preached in his life. But what I, what I want to actually make sure that we're making room for is, is believers. Any, any believer. person mm -hmm. filled with the Holy Spirit awesome. at any moment in their life right. at Target, yes. Yes. possibly even Walmart, yeah. can yeah. minister. I don't know. Walmart's a little hard for me. Walmart's a little hard for me. It's, it's, I feel way more And I do want to say this. You don't have to wait for a gift of healing. Jesus said, these signs will follow them that believe. My name yeah. will lay hands on the sick. Yeah. That's when you pray the prayer of faith to get somebody healed. God will honor yeah. that as well because he'll See, honor his work. You don't have to wait till the pastor puts you up in the right. pulpit. Mm -hmm. right. You don't have to wait till you corner somebody like in the, the lobby of the church. You can actually take it out yeah. into your everyday Amen. ordinary Amen. world. Right. The power of God, yeah. the promises of God. Yeah. And if you feel led by the Spirit to speak to somebody or <laughs> touch somebody or pray for somebody or Great. be generous to somebody, maybe we should just start with being generous. Yes. That would be so awesome. We can do that. All right. Well, that's one of the gifts. 
Yeah. Gift of giving. Yeah. Yeah. Generosity. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question, and this is kind of going back to an earlier question. If the Holy Spirit, you know, he, well, we know the Holy Spirit came to reveal Jesus. Right. Right. Okay. So what about, like, maybe what we've seen in the last couple of decades, a lot of the manifestations of shaking and laughing and rolling on the floor and right. falling. How are those things revealing Jesus? Well, let me say this. The Bible talks about unusual signs, but usually it's for a short season. There are time periods when unusual signs and wonders happen and it gets people's attention and points them to Jesus. Mm -hmm. What I find is very, very distasteful is when people get more into the manifestations right. than wow. they do yes. into the manifester. Yes. I'll That's never forget the time I was in Singapore. A healing evangelist had come through. He has a, a gift of people just start laughing hysterically. And I remember the presence of God was about to face a very large church, about to fall in this church. And all of a sudden people started laughing. And it was like you had just taken nails on a chalkboard. Right. That's what went up into my spirit. So it was and the I right said, thing and maybe at the wrong time. I said, stop, stop. Yeah. And what happened was they stopped. I said, listen, you camped at the manifestation. Right. You didn't follow the spirit of God. That's not what he was about to do here. He was about to touch people yeah. deeply in the fear of the yeah. Lord. Right. And then I said, now we're going to hope that the spirit of God now returns and, and ministers. And I had them pray again. Spirit of God came in. People started mm -hmm. weeping all over that building. Mm -hmm. So what happened in those situations when it got very distasteful is they started almost like showing off, you know, like, 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 like a couple. They're not going to have intimacy out in front of everybody. And it's almost like they wanted to take that intimacy that God had given them and show it off and say, look at this. We're spiritual. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I find the more I know the Holy Spirit, the more I want to protect him, his gifts, his ability, his power with a very respectful, honoring type of way. Not in a way that quenches him because the Bible talks about quenching. That's when you quench his power and his gifts. Don't do that. Okay, and that's right. literally what that's talking about. Right. But honor him, don't display right. him right. as if he's just, oh, some cheap yeah. influence wow. or power. Yeah. And, you know, and I just want to say something again. I mean, we're asking the Holy Spirit, we're inviting him to do whatever he wants to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I find that the Holy Spirit, he he's, sometimes will do things in a way or at a time that might sound inconvenient or whatever, but never forced never contrived, right. never annoying. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's never gonna draw attention to, to people. It's gonna draw attention to God and there's usually an atmosphere and a presence for that. And and um, I was recently with some, some people that it was from all different denominations and I heard some of them mocking what I believe had been real at one time mm -hmm. and then maybe got carried forward in, in a hope in a hope that God would continue to bless what He blessed here. Let's keep the, let's just only do the form yeah. and the function of it got lost in the yeah. way. Yeah. The form had stayed, and they were mocking it. And I and and I, I sense even as we're talking, I just want to say we're not mocking that. We want everything that what the Holy Spirit has, but we want it to be in faith. We want it to be yeah. in yeah. decent That's order, and we want it to be accompanied by God's yeah. presence. Okay, so another question. Um, is it possible for people to really feel they have a peace about something and it actually not be God? To have a peace about something and, and not and be God? Not yes, be God. absolutely. If you look at Ezekiel chapter 14, God talks about the people that come to him with idols in their heart. Mm. Now, what is an idol? New Testament idolatry is covetousness. It's when you des covet, you desire mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. God said, and they go to even a prophetic person and they say, would you please pray over me and speak the word of the Lord to me? Mm -hmm. God said, I'll answer them according to the multitude of idols in their heart. Mm -hmm. wow. When I go into the presence of God and I'm asking for something, mm -hmm. I have to make sure my heart is neutral. Yes. Wow. Yes. I have had situations in my life where I did not go in neutral. I had peace and it totally wasn't God and it caused me a lot wow. of sorrow. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you've talked about, you know, being led by that velvet feeling and, and feeling, you know, like not good about something. You've talked about the witnesses. We've talked about intuition. We've talked about, um, you know, just praying. And, but can you talk about some other ways that you might be led by the Spirit, like that God could actually speak to somebody? Because we know that it isn't often a audible voice. And, and actually, I just heard recently a challenge that God even still speaks to people. <laughs> no, right. literally, right. Um, that, that he, you know, you only read the scripture. And um, so I would love, do you believe God speaks? And 
Does he speak only in accord with his word? And and kind of just give some framework on that because we have a generation so that almost good. thinks God doesn't talk anymore. Well, first of all, Paul said to the Corinthian church, you used to follow those dumb idols. Now, dumb to us is stupid idols, right? Mute. And what dumb means is mute. In other words, the gods they served, those Corinthians, could not speak. He said, what's the difference is our God speaks and he speaks clearly, okay? So, how does he speak? I find the New Testament shows various different ways that he speaks to us, okay? First and foremost, this is above all, is the inward witness. That's that velvet feeling we talked about. That is the number one way he speaks. Even more than through his word. Even more. No, 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 wait a minute. The word always lines up with that. If you get a velvet feeling and it doesn't line up with the word, don't listen. Yeah, okay. you, you obviously have gone in with wrong motives in your heart. you got to get your balance back to zero. Okay. So that's, the word would always be the structure. The word is, that's always the final say the foundation say so. and the structure. Okay. It's that inward witness. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is the still small voice the Bible talks about. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. The spirit of God speaks what he hears. He's speaking what Jesus is saying. Yeah. That's the still small voice. Now, I will tell you this. Some people have gotten really, really, really into bondage because they start following voices. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, the inward witness, there was scratching and there wasn't any witness to it. I find any time I've heard the voice of God, the witness accompanied it and it lined up with the word. So in other words, we're building a foundation here. Word, witness, voice. So if you got voice, no witness, don't listen to the voice. I've been in meetings. People have prophesied over me. No presence, no inward witness. I put the prophecy on a shelf. Okay? I actually even broke You're the nicer. words at times. I, I throw broke it the away, words, right. But... <laughs> the next way the New Testament talks about is through dreams. Okay? You've got Paul having a dream, yeah. a Macedonian man saying, please come help us. It was the Holy Spirit showing Paul, get over to Macedonia. He had tried to go to Bithynia, he wouldn't permit him. He tried to go to that other place, wouldn't let him. Then he had the dream of the Macedonian man saying, please come over and help us. That's dreams. God will sometimes speak to some people a little bit more through dreams than maybe others. I know this is a real powerful way God speaks to my wife, is through dreams. Me, it's a little bit rare, but it does happen once in a while. Me, it's more the inward voice, still small voice. The next way that the Bible talks about is by a vision. Yeah. A vision is when God will literally... He, Paul had a vision. He said, I don't know whether I was in the body or out of the body. You don't know if you're in the body or out of the body, but you literally see into the spirit world. Okay? That is called a vision. Um, that's the way my pastor launched me and Lisa into Messenger International back in 1989. He came in. He said, gentlemen, I literally had a vision last night. It was like I was watching it on a TV screen. Mm -hmm. And he said, I saw one of you pastors will not be a pastor on our staff. You'll be traveling all over, out and back, out and back, and you'll be a blessing to the body of Christ. He said, the man is you, John Bevere. God had told me that yeah. in prayer um, about eight months earlier. So it was a confirmation. Do you understand? Okay. The final way the New Testament talks about that he speaks to us is through trances. If you remember, Peter went up, he was hungry, which I am very hungry right now. And he That's went what happens to when you're hungry, a, you have yeah, a trance. Yeah, you get into a trance. Huh? <laughs> he saw a trance, and what happens in this trance? A trance is where your senses get suspended. The difference between a trance and a vision, a vision, your senses are still intact. Wow. In the vision, you can be moving in there. When Paul went up to heaven, John went to heaven, wow. they were moving there. In a trance, your senses get suspended and you see something and you just hear the voice of God. Rise, p Peter, kill and eat, right? And I, I've known some people that have actually had trances before. I don't want to take the time because our time is so precious. We're running out of it. Now, somebody says, but what about a fleece? A fleece is Old Testament. You have to take everything in the Old Testament, run it through the cross. The cross will either leave it alone, it will revise it or delete it. I take fleeces and I run it through the cross and I see it deletes it. Because the Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, not as many as are led by fleeces. You've got to remember, they didn't have the Spirit of God abiding on the inside of them in that Old Testament. So they were like, God, you got to talk to me through this fleece. I personally don't encourage fleeces 
to New Testament believers, I believe it's okay, but you better make sure you're being bottom line led by the word and by the inward witness yeah, right, yeah. first and foremost, yeah. because the fleece is in the physical realm and you don't want to get messed up into that realm. We are called to live in the spirit yeah. and to walk yeah. in the spirit. And, and I actually wanted to um, add to the, what you said about the physical realm. I think all those were answers according to the spirit realm. And then we have a very clear mandate that if you see, if you see your brother in need, you right. don't shut yes. your heart. And so sometimes so you don't need a voice from heaven. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right. you just need to see a need. Yes. Yes. Or if you hear of a need. When we heard what was happening with the books, that people were tearing apart pages and memorizing on passing out, we said, how, how can we shut up our heart? Right. We cannot. We've, we've never seen it. But when we heard it, we said, we are going we to respond. We got to get these messages yeah. into when, the pastors. When, when I heard, when you heard about it. girls being trafficked, exactly. God when, didn't speak to me in that boardroom, but I said, yeah. Lisa, we've got to help. I read it in a magazine. Yes. I saw it when I was right. there. And so, yeah. you know, sometimes people are looking for like a sign or a trance or a vision or a dream. When the Bible says, if you, you see, see your brother right. in and need. we start with our brother in need, Absolutely. we start with the Christians in need, we start with the people that we can actually see, the ones we can actually touch, the ones we can actually hear their voices, right. and, um, and we just can't shut our hearts. And then I find that every time we respond to what we see in just the natural realm, then God entrusts us yes. with more and more of the Absolutely. spiritual mm -hmm. realm, yeah. Yeah. because he says, I, I see that you're faithful with this. Yes. I can trust you with mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more of the faith realm. So, well, babe, we've got one minute left. Can we pray Absolutely. for for our friends and partners? Yeah. Can you pray for them? Yeah, I'll start and you stop. You okay, that okay. sounds great. All right, Heavenly Father, we just thank you that in the last days you said that your sons and your daughters would be led by your spirit. According to Acts 2.17, we are the generation that is going to walk in visions and signs and wonders and yes. dreams. So, Father, have your way. We just ask you right now to fill us with your spirit. Mm -hmm. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, a mouth to speak, a heart enlarged to believe, and the boldness, Father, to pray scary prayers and see heaven invade earth. Yes. And I want you to just open your eyes and look, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brothers, for my sisters that are watching now. First and foremost, I speak to bondage. I command yes. it to be broken yes. in yes. your life. I speak captivity. to sickness and disease. I command it to be broken. Yes. We command every thought, every yes. single idea that exalts itself against the knowledge of God to be destroyed yes. and torn down. Yes. And I name. release now, Lisa and I together in yes. agreement, Amen. the presence of the living God yes, be filled Thank with you, the Spirit yes. in Jesus' mighty name and yes. flourish in the giftings that God has placed upon your life yes. in your world of influence. Yes. Father, Lisa, and I, we yes. commit Thank them you, to your hands yes, now Lord. in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody yes. said, amen. 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 amen.